This is the story of Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn, Part 3 of 4. Now, we left off where Menphilia summoned the hero back to the Waking Sands so they could discuss how they can learn more about the Asians. Let's get started. Menphilia confesses we know little of the Asians, and with the primal threat out of the way, she'd like to learn more. She's received word that the Immortal Flames have seen one, so she sends the hero to Uldah to look around. The Immortal Flames say that the witness who reported the sighting has died, so the hero goes to a well-traveled bridge and asks around. The merchant Hihibaru says he's seen the masked man having meetings by a fire, and suggests the hero make a similar fire in hopes that it will lure him out. The hero lights the fire, and the Asian does not make an appearance, but the hero finds an Alamegan note at the meeting site. Hihibaru directs the hero to Little Alamigo to investigate. His daughter Hihira is there, so he suggests the hero start with her. In Little Alamigo, Hihira says Gundobald is the guy to talk to, but Gundobald tells the hero to leave. The hero asks around more and gets nowhere, so he heads back to Menphilia. Menphilia says Alamigo was conquered by the Garlean Empire and their refugees are in a poor state, so it's no wonder they don't trust outsiders. Thankfully, she says the Scions have an Alamegan member who is available to help named Haribert. The hero meets Haribert, who says the Alamegans want nothing to do with him ever since he left the Resistance to join the Scions, but he says there are Resistance fighters in Quarry Mill that should be able to help. The hero goes to Quarry Mill and finds the Resistance fighters not getting much help from the locals. He assists in healing a sick person and finding someone who is lost. In return, they write a letter to Gundobald vouching for the hero. Back in Little Alamigo, Gundobald is happy to hear from fellow resistance fighters and now agrees to help. He says that young men in his camp have been meeting with the masked one, but when the hero asks around, they all deny it. Outside of town, a group of them ambush the hero. Gundobald says we need to figure out what the youth are up to. He and the hero find a few clues around the camp and determine that the youth are out to meet the Amalja. They rush out to stop them. It turns out their plan was to steal crystals from the Amalja and use them to summon Ralgar to fight and win back Alamigo. Unsurprisingly, the masked man gave them this idea. Unfortunately, Gundobald and the hero are a bit too late as many Alamegan youth have already been killed and the Amalja aren't finished. The group is attacked. After the Amalja are defeated, the youth want to advance and steal the crystals, but Gundelbald forbids it and explains the tempering which compels worship and is uncurable. After learning what he could from the Alamegans, the hero returns to the Waking Sands. Menphilia laments that the Asian was behind this and may have been behind other troubles. She then directs the hero to a second lead in North Shroud. In North Shroud, a man named Medrod recounts a horrifying story. He says he saw a masked man over the mutilated corpse of a woman. Madrod's companions explain there have been several occurrences of this, and in all cases the women had their faces torn to shreds. They also note that the masked man was accompanied by a winged eyeball. After chasing a few dead leads, Medrod and friends express frustration, but the hero leaves to look around. It doesn't take long to find another mutilated corpse, and as he approaches it, he's attacked by a winged eyeball. The hero takes the corpse to the twin adder. They notice a lily button on the body, which was also found on previous bodies. The hero takes the button to Gridania and asks around town about it. Eventually, he meets a man named Ursandal, who recognizes it and immediately tells a story. He says he used to be a servant at Hakka Manor for a beautiful, wealthy woman named Lady Amandine. Her face was disfigured during the Calamity, and she has never been the same since. She became reclusive and had strange visitors. She once performed a ritual where she mutilated a girl's face, and Ursandal fled. The hero gathers a group of brave adventurers and enters Hakka Manor. They find it filled with nightmarish creatures, but they clear them out and proceed to kill Lady Amandine. Once the lady is dead, two Asians appear who threaten the hero and tell him they work for La Habrea. They leave to report to La Habrea about the hero's strength. Back in Gridania, Ursandal is thankful, but he feels guilty for keeping his silence, so he says he's turning himself in to the authorities. The hero returns to the Waking Sands. Menphilia is concerned about the Asians testing the hero's strength and the fact that it's still not known what they are up to. She then says it's time to pause the investigation into the Asians and focus on a new development. The Maelstrom requests our assistance. A tribe of kobolds in the vicinity of Limsa Lominsa has reawakened Titan. 
Our task will be to slay the Primal. So long as tormented souls will them to exist, the realm will never be rid of Primals. The Maelstrom has kept a watchful eye upon the Beast Tribes, and the Kobolds in particular. Which brings us to the matter at hand. We know scarcely anything of Titan. The only force known to have bested him, the modestly named Company of Heroes, disbanded five years since, and mercenaries are not in the habit of keeping chronicles. A pity the Kobolds lack the gentle sensibilities of the Sylphs. A peaceful resolution would be more than welcome. So you will accept? Thank you. We can't very well send him to Limsa Lominsa without your Stola. I never thought it in question. Ever reliable. You may count on the full support of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. You will be apprised of the tactical situation when you reach the Sailor's Ward. May you walk in the light of the crystal. The hero greets Merylwib in Limsa Lamenta. The kobolds have summoned their primal, Titan, and this is very unusual as they are not prone to unprovoked aggression. Before the Calamity, there was a time when the Titan was slain by a company of heroes. They've long since disbanded, but Ishtola suggests we talk to their former members to learn what we can first. The hero seeks out former hero Trachtome first. He's brash and arrogant and won't tell the hero anything until he proves himself. After a series of scams, it's found that he's not even the former Titan Slayer, and the hero is sent to find Whiskate. The hero meets Whiskate in Costa del Sol. He seems genuine, but still refuses to help until the hero can prove his worth. He says the hero's mission is to help prepare for a very important banquet, which will have rare delicacies that can't be purchased. The hero is sent on a series of elite hunts for rare ingredients. The hero is also sent on a few of these hunting missions by another ex-member of the Company of Heroes named Landonel. Whiskate says this next one is the last ingredient. He tells the hero of his friend Brayflox who is supposed to deliver the cheese, but something has gone wrong. The hero meets the goblin Brayflox who says her fellow goblins have been driven from their homeland, the Longstop, by a dragon. The hero gathers a party and enters the Longstop to reclaim the goblin homeland. After clearing out the monsters there and slaying the dragon, Brayflox gives the hero some very stinky cheese. The hero then delivers the cheese to Whiskate back in Costa del Sol. He says there is actually one more task, to pick up wine from Shamani in Wineport. But Shimani says his wine is not worthy and he sends you to a nearby winemaker instead. This guy turns out to be a snob and refuses to help. As Shimani reminisces the legendary Bacchus wine that existed before the Calamity, she sends you to deliver a gift to her friend while she thinks of an alternative. Her friend is a little crazy and he asks you to slay some bugs nearby as their buzzing is really bothering him. The hero hunts them down and kills them. The friend expresses his gratitude by sending back some palm wine. Shimani suspects that some leaves found in the gift are actually from a Bacchus plant, so the hero returns to the friend and it turns out a Bacchus plant is growing on the back of a Gabooey nearby. The hero slays the Gabooey and takes the Bacchus vine back to Shimani, who gives it to the snobby winemaker so he can grow a Bacchus vineyard. Appreciative, he gives him a fine Bacchus wine in exchange. Shimani gives this to the hero, which he takes to Whiskate. The banquet now begins, and it is revealed that proving the hero's worth was the only reason for having the banquet, so the hero takes a break to enjoy the feast. After the feast, Whiskate sends the hero to Riol to learn the secret to defeat Titan. Riol shows the hero an etherite crystal that one can attune to and be teleported to Titan's lair. The hero does this and picks a fight with the Lord of Crags.
After a lengthy battle, he defeats him. The fight was witnessed by two Garleans, Nero and Ratatan, and they discuss preparations for some mysterious thing that will allow them to subjugate Eorzea. La Habrea the Assian appears and agrees, but Ratatan has doubts. As they leave, we find that Yishtola witnessed the conversation and is concerned about why the Empire would be working with the Assians. Yustola and the hero agree to rendezvous at Bronze Lake. Part 3 ends there. If you want to find out what happens next, check out the next video. Until next time. <laughs>